Hello. Okay. This is my suggestions, um, ideas for what Wizards of the West Coast, or any platform for that matter, could do to help enhance Dungeons & Dragons for players. Um, I'm going to obviously specifically speak about things that I think would enhance my game. Um, they seem to apply to a lot of things. Some of them seem to be things that are already in play, or at least uh, being mentioned by Wizards of the West Coast. So, uh, uh, without further ado, um, we'll just get into it. So, uh, my game is primarily hack and slash. We just use the uh, rules like a board game, almost like Warhammer which is almost counterintuitive because this is a role-playing game, but we almost play it purely board game with role-playing to influence um, some of the flourishes and the way the monsters and creatures and players and characters interact during the combat. Um, that being said, um, I'll start with that piece, with the, uh, uh, the combat piece. Um, I really enjoy, now I'm old school, I started from the original, um, when I jumped into 5e, I loved it. The rules were simplified. Um, it felt like first edition, second edition to me. Um, a lot of the extra stuff on all of those were fun when I was a kid, but now that I'm older, I like the simplified version. Um, doesn't mean anybody else can't put all their own, uh, use all the other versions and all the other pieces. Um, anyway, um, so for combat, uh, I always loved technology, so putting a TV down flat for maps, oh man, game changer. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I've tried Roll20 or D20 or some of the other platforms. They're all still too clunky and too much of a pain in the butt uh, to, to get to work. Um, I think they probably work if you sit and geek with it forever. But I, 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 that's not me anymore. I, I need we, we need something that's nice and intuitive, that works smoothly for somebody to set up, and doesn't have to get into some sort of detail of, of dragging and dropping individual walls and all this garbage. Um, uh, simply put, looking at, let's just jump to what, what you guys have done so far, um, the encounter builder, excellent. I, I know it's simplified, but it ties the characters and all the monsters together into one simple way to just dump everything into an encounter and then all the stats are right there and you can roll the dice and everything. That is great. As simple as that is, that is a wonderful thing. I use that with uh, Photoshop for my maps and then just do a simple reveal on top. Um, I would love to see a better version of all the other maps out there that are interactive where the icons move and they reveal Fog of War. Um, with, uh, what I think, what I can envision and what's, you know, I work in the computer field. So these things are, this stuff is rudimentary. This is not even as advanced as making a, a video game, what you guys could do here and what uh, the types of tools that would just be epic. Um, they could be used for people online or people playing live. Um, a simple map system. All of your modules should have the map system embedded in it and tied to Encounter Builder. Very simple. I buy an account, I buy one of your modules. Boom! I can use the whole thing. I pull it up. There's a flat map. It's got the uh, all the characters tie into it from Encounter Builder right to the map. Um, Fog of War, monsters, everything. It's all tied together. It'd be very simple. Um, I think that's what you guys are going to start doing. Uh, from what I read and watched. Um, I like, uh, so that, that's the first level. That, that should be a very simple default. Um, uh, on options for that, I think making it flexible so that if somebody wants to roll their dice uh, on the table like we do, you should be able to let somebody input the, the data so that uh, um, uh, instead of rolling uh, with the, the app itself, you could just type in what you rolled. Uh, and the reason I say that is because where I'm going with this is I think a feature that may or may not have been mentioned that could be really cool is combat flourishes. So when you have a combat, when you have an encounter with a monster and the map has the, 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 the folks laid out on the map and you guys are going to, I think it's an Unreal Engine, I'm not sure what you're using, but you're going to have it all mapped out on the map. Uh, where the monster is, where the player is, when he does his attack. Boom! Now when he does that attack, you just have it fully animate and you could have different views, and, and these could be over-the-top flourishes because, you know, as, as in our game, this is the only thing. You could have a, an instant replay that shows it another angle, and uh, just really cool 
Um, uh, let me back up a second. Um, these flourishes could be done on a secondary screen, so you'd have the map in front of you, or you could choose to put them on the map down on the, on, on the, uh, the map that's on the table too, but you've got a secondary screen behind you with this 3D version and the flourishes. Um, and, and then all the other types of content that you would want to display to the characters behind you, pictures of the monsters, uh, of, of whatever artwork is involved, um, could be all tied in. And I think the secret is, is tying this stuff together and making it easy for a dungeon master uh, to, to use and navigate. Now, I saw something about um, an AI dungeon master. That's a cool idea, too. Um, I think the pieces of that should be tied into a dungeon master that can use portions of that AI, or if somebody uses it fully and it does the job, cool. Um, where I see that going, for me, I'm not a very good role player, or I'm just not a very good role player, but I like it. I think it sets up uh, things neatly. It's nice to have transition and a little bit of context and a little bit of um, theater um, around it. I'm not good at theater of the mind, but it's neat to have. So having, you know, and when I get a module from D&D, &D, you have that stuff built in. Those little gray boxes, I love those. Those, I get into those, I read those. That gives a little bit of context to our hack and slash, even though we just want to get in there and kill, kill, kill. Um, uh, I, I like those pieces. And, and then even having that further, further along to where you guys have voice animator, voice actors, whatever, that do those pieces and I could throw it up on the screen and it blah, 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 comes in and, blah, 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 and then I pull the mini out and everybody fight. Um, you know, that, that, could be, that could be great pieces. So that's, I think that's in a nutshell where I uh, would like to see uh, some of the technology go. I think it would be a money maker for Wizards of the West Coast, uh, if you tie all this stuff together and make it very simple for everybody to use. Um, it's not a lot of work. It's easy for any game developer type people. They could throw this stuff together and you could tie all your content together. You could even take all of the versions of D&D &D and put them all in there. Let somebody choose one, whatever, who cares? You got the rules, put them in there. Somebody wants to play it. If they want to use these tools, cool. If they don't, they don't, but you've got it in there. You just plug all this stuff into this type of a system. You, you, you intertwine all of these tools so they all work together. Um, uh, they also, you could also make them to where they're pluggable, where you can just use one thing. I just want the encounter builder. I just want the maps. I just want the whatever. All of these things would still work and they'd still be tied to it as much or as little as people want. Um, uh, I think it's a no brainer. Um, it's the type of thing that uh, oddly enough, when I was a kid, I was using um, video games. I had a Commodore 64 and I would take the sound effects out of Temple of Abshai and I put them into manual files where I could hit buttons and I'd have these sound effects going on. Um, that's another thing too. Uh, obviously you probably thought about it, but add the, add the sound effects as part of the, the background. What's going on and, and, and the sound effects from the combat, sound effects of the environment. Let the, the people choose how loud, how soft, maybe even some variants of that type of thing. All these little things, just give, give all of these options to the players and the dungeon masters and let them choose how and when and where they want to use them. Um, I think there was another big piece I wanted to mention, but I think that is it. I mentioned the versions, um, the way combat should tie together. Uh, it's, and it sounds like you guys are doing that. So keep on that track, make some things. You know, uh, we're happy playing the way we are. We'll, we'll go back to pen and paper if we have to, we like that. But uh, we also like uh, um, whatever little flourishes we can have in the background. We still use minis and we still use dice. Um, but having uh, all of this stuff as extra, uh, uh, what do you call it, fluff is great. We love the fluff. Look, I got all your, I got all the fluff on the walls. We love the fluff. Fluff is awesome. Um, nothing wrong with it. Give me more fluff. I'll pay you for it. And you do it right. That's, uh, that's about it. Uh, I guess that's all I got. Thanks for listening.